Hello, this is Nice Wonder, and you're watching the Now Man Show. Norman Davis is the host of Truth Noir, seen on the Royal Channel and YouTube. Truth Noir is your introduction to the corruptions of the world and the methods used by those in power to direct your attention elsewhere. Topics range anywhere from social justice issues and current events to government conspiracy theories and UFOs. Norman, <laughs> welcome to the Now Man Show. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're, you go all over the place with that show. Uh, yeah, I try to. Well, I mean, there's a, there's a lot that, uh, that needs to change in the world. Oh, so. Yeah, that's an understatement, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we, we talk about a lot of different stuff, and uh, some of it's fun. Some of it is, um, you know, like the UFO and the lizard people stuff. <laughs> um, I've heard compelling arguments for them. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, and then I try and also do, like, some more kind of socially relevant stuff that... Um, you know stuff that people are easily distracted by the the news media and it's all just sensationalism instead of boiling down to like well like what is the actual issue you know what is the thing that needs to change exactly very good point so. like you know identifying what the problem is first you know and then and then you figure out well what can we do about it if there's anything we can do about it you know yeah um, i th some of the topics i noticed in the videos that i saw on youtube um Propaganda, mind control, net neutrality, stand-up comedy, LGBTQ, yep. <laughs> private prisons, conspiracy theories, biblical end times, European socialism, homelessness, meme analysis. That's an interesting topic. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, freedom of speech, Syria, insurance fraud, Ralph Nader and tort law. That's great. Um, 666, Mark of the Beast, occult symbolism and art, activism and protests. And on and on, like, of course, you mentioned UFOs. So that's, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, you fit on this show perfectly. I mean, we like variety on the Now Man show. So uh, do you have a favorite subject that, other than, uh, is it anything connected to corruption? Uh, or Yeah, I think for the most part, I, I that's what bothers me the most mm. in society uh, because I've, I've found that it's those people that have the most power uh, that are the most corrupt. Mm. And you, as a citizen that are subject to their corruption, have the least power to do anything about it. And so um, that's a thing that's always bothered me since, I, I, I mean, as long as I can remember watching the news and being upset about something, yeah. you know, like it was that. You know, you have, in elementary school, you tell your kids not to be bullies, and then you have this whole... Uh, and I'm talking about like the people who wear badges, uh, you know, that are able to be the biggest bullies and extortionists and oftentimes operate, operate like a gang and, and, and we have to pay them to act in this horrible way. <laughs> yeah, there's just something so, in, in the mindset of all that which we should talk about. Um, well, let's watch a clip first. You brought a clip, right, from sure, your show? Sure, yeah. I, uh, I have a lot of episodes that we've done over the last three years, but I wanted to uh, kind of put together the very first episode and the uh, last episode uh, that uh, you were on. Oh. And uh, to just sort of, uh, sort of bring it full circle, and I think it gives a, a pretty good idea of what we're doing. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So this is, let's watch a clip now of uh, Truth Noir with uh, Norm Davis. Basically, um, what Truth Noir is, is an attempt to um, sort of shed some light on the um, kind of weird things that uh, go on in the news that get reported that don't really get a satisfactory answer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was one thing that uh, I have a couple books by George Orwell here that I, I'm going to, uh, hopefully if time allows, we'll review a little bit later, but he was a big proponent of um, the methodology methodologies by which people are convinced that these horrible things that uh, their governments are doing are just and um, and even to be applauded, mm -hmm. you know, and celebrated. He was the propaganda minister, um, or or what Orwell would have called the Ministry of Truth, mm -hmm. right, where they manufacture lies to convince people that uh, these horrible things are the way they've always been. And what he said was naturally the common people don't want war neither in Russia nor in England nor in America nor for that matter in Germany. Mm -hmm. 
That is understood, but the people can always be brought to the bidding of their leaders. That much is easy. All you have to do is tell them they are being attacked and denounce the pacifists for lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger. It works the same way in any country. Mm. And uh, you know, I, I kind of feel like that uh, that it wasn't just the Germans, as it turns out, that uh, you know, or the German citizenry that mm. were. Uh, victims of this. My point is that uh, reality or people's perceptions of reality is basically just like a stack of narratives and it's like um, whoever has sort of uh, the most convincing stories is tends to be the one that wins out even if um, it doesn't really sync up with facts. Well hello everyone and welcome to episode three of Truth Noir in season three. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, today on the show, uh, I'm having a uh, guest that has his own show on Pasadena Media as well, and uh, very uh, politically minded, socially minded, uh, writes his own music and books, and is uh, overall a weirdo and uh, fellow concerned citizen. Uh, so I want to thank him for coming on my show and sitting with me. Um, I've also interviewed... Uh out in the field, Dennis Kucinich and Coulter, uh, you know, have had what live bands in here. What was Ann Coulter like? <laughs> well, she <laughs> predicted that Donald Trump would become the president. Thank you for that question. Um, coalition building, I think, is really important at this point, uh, and to know how to do that, because one of the reasons why I picked left progressive issues, as well as left progressive people to, to interview on the show, is because that's been missing. I think there's five issues that we can create coalitions on. I cover those real quick: um, anti-war, anti-poverty, anti-well, uh, fascism, but anti-racism. Well, those come from Dr. King's original Poor People's Campaign in 1968, but in you know, 2018 we've added uh, environmental justice. The fifth issue, which is unique to the U.S., I think needs to be getting the money out of politics, uh, and that's corporate money, not public money. There's not enough people that are willing to come together and do that, not be complacent and not be ignorant. And we need to actually get there and do that if we want to see the world get better. Yeah, absolutely. There's not enough people. And this has uh, been my thing in past episodes of the show is that all of this stuff is there to be known. All of the history, all of the past political maneuverings are in the historical record for anyone who wants to learn them to like all of this ignorance is completely unnecessary these That's days. Right. Um, so yeah, all of that being said, uh, we're running out of time. Yeah, I wish but, we had more time. Uh, time. Absolutely. Well, well, you'll have to just come back one of these days. Oh, I'd love to, <laughs> and you'll have to come on my show too. It would be an honor. Um, so yeah, thank you again. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Uh, Dan Nicewander of the Now Man Show right here on Pasadena Media. And uh, we're going to be coming back to you next time with more weird stuff. I love it. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, wherever you're going, get there safe. See you next time. Bye. Excellent. What, what did that logo say there at the end? Mainstream news to mainstream media is telling you lies, uh, I, and I feel like it's one of those things that I like. Donald Trump has made that his sort of like fake news yeah. thing, and it's unfortunate. But I, I feel like it's sort of always been that way. Like there's an aspect of the news that's always been sensationalist and biased. Yeah. Ever since corporations have been allowed to buy up the airwaves and put their agenda out there. And so I, mean, I think it still stands to be said, even though it's now become a, a you know, made a mockery of by it. Yeah, I think, I think it's been exasperated, though. I mean, just like, you know, uh, with Wall Street, you know, how over time uh, deregulations were uh, put into place, you know, and the same thing with the media. You know, yeah, exactly. And now it's it's you know like it's on steroids because we have the Counter Propaganda Act of 2016. Oh my goodness, yeah. Which just put fake news on steroids. Um, yeah, it you, doesn't even have to try to pretend to be the truth anymore. Right. It's like that's, that's why you know uh, our president will say one thing one minute and then another thing the next minute because he knows it, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, there's now. no absolutely no accountability. And the, and the law 
uh, supports that now, mm -hmm. essentially. And a lot of Americans probably don't know that. Anyway, but we're here to talk about what you want to talk about right now. So sure. uh, you mentioned uh, the law enforcement. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's... Uh I, I always get the counter argument of like, well, the police have a difficult job. And, uh, and I feel like saying that is like saying, well, all lives matter. Like it, technically that's a true statement, but it doesn't, it, it's, a, it's a placative yes. thing to say. It doesn't address the concerns that a, either a certain group of people have or the public at large have uh, about these things, and so when you when you say, "Well, they're not all bad," or something like that, I would argue that uh, you know, are they all out shooting people in the back that are unarmed? Uh, probably not. They're probably not all doing that. Obviously not. But there are ones that are showing up after the fact and planting evidence. There are those who are uh, synchronizing their reports who were not there to actually witness the thing. There are the ones who are there bearing false witness against their neighbors and they're like, these are the people they're supposed to be serving. And uh, and it's all of these things in conjunction. You have judges that will refuse to press charges against people that, um, you know, that say, hey, this guy treated me unfairly or did something dishonest. And so they're not all bad. They're not all this bad. Right. But I mean, there's, there's varying degrees. There, yeah, I mean, there's a certain number of Ten Commandments being broken here right. that uh, none of which are, are really okay. And if this were just a person on the street that acted towards you in this way that didn't have any authority over you, this is certainly not a person you would want to be friends with. Right, exactly. And don't you think you a know, lot of it's built on an insecurity too? Well, Personal insecurity we, and, 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 absolutely. and you know, ultra masculinity and that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, well, we, we did an episode on the show where we talked about the... Um, Actually, it was piggybacked on an episode that we did about serial killers <laughs> and, oh, uh, wow. and the psychopathy and the mental profiles of serial killers and psychopaths in general. And uh, I happened to find an article about the 10 professions most likely to um, attract psychopaths. And it oh, was really? Like, wow. Yeah, it was like CEO, politician, uh, huh. doctor as far as like the sort of authority, like power complex kind of thing. Um, and and police officer was right there in that group. And, uh, and it's understandable, like you're given a lot of power over people. And what do all of our favorite superheroes tell us about having great power with it comes great responsibility? That's right. That's the focus. <laughs> you know? That should be the, the focus. The morality is you know, the responsibility in that position that you have. And a lot of people drop the ball there, and they do yeah. uh, again varying degrees of different things, from criminal behavior to just disrespect to human life. We got to yeah. wrap it up, but uh, let's continue this conversation some more. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Thank you. Know, you. Absolutely. And uh, this is Nice Wander, and uh, we'll be back in just a second with Adam Papagen and Norman Davis. studio album, the first one was Aladdin Sane, right? That was the first one in 1973, and that was pure luck. I get a email every day from someone in the world regarding that album. And Brian says it, it comes from a higher place in the mind, and then he said real music comes from the heart. What do you think about that? I think he's absolutely right. And of all songs that you picked, there's a, a section of that in the middle where it goes bump, 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 beep, bump, ba da 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 ba Brian and I had a, like a fun argument over that. There was uh, Stevie in the pistachio green jumpsuit <laughs> with his uh, uh, with the guy who who brought him by. Yeah, yeah. And Malcolm's friend, fellow bass player Ronnie Blanco, and uh, it started then. And we didn't leave the studio for five years.
Hello, and we're back on the Now Man Show. This is Nice Wonder. Adam Papagen is a tour guide, pop culture historian, and native Angelino. He's creator of the O.J. Simpson Tour and host of ASMR Talk Show here on Pasadena Media. Thank you, Adam, for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, um, ASMR, how would you describe that? ASMR stands for Autosensory Meridian Response. Uh, put simply, it's sounds that feel good. So certain people, maybe uh, you've experienced this or someone out there watching, certain times when you hear uh, soft, delicate, concentrated sounds, it could be you know, something like the hum of an air conditioner or uh, traffic if you're like in the car, you know, that gentle motion stuff. Or it could be uh, you know, intentional ASMR of somebody making a soft voice like that. Uh, then you get a little tingle in the front of your brain. Um, and uh, it's all anecdotal, but a lot of people are really into it. Uh, but it's just a softer, more relaxing uh, type of way of speaking. So, so when people tune in, they can kind of feel like they're relaxing. Yeah. Even if you're talking about an intense subject. Yeah, well, that usually doesn't happen. Oh, oh that doesn't happen? <laughs> I, tr I try to keep it light. I try to keep it light. Yeah. Because I tuned in once, and I saw actually another community producer on your show, and you guys were talking like this. Yeah, that's the, the idea. Entire time. Yeah, that's and, correct. Uh, you know, you were having intellectual conversation, but whispering. Yeah, it's and like I, being at the very library. That's a unique uh, idea. I like that. I like that. Yeah, it's like going to the library. Oh yeah. Kind of, you know, you talk softer. Or yeah. An airplane sometimes. You kind of because people want to like be chilled out there. Yeah, and it's uh, it makes people actually have to listen closer, right? Because like, hey, the, the volume is lower. Absolutely. Yeah. And it makes you kind of feel because you're you're listening more intently that you're part of the conversation too. Yes. Because you're a little closer to it. And what uh, what kind of topics do you like to go into? Uh, so usually what I'll do is I have somebody on the show is I'll go through their social media, any interviews I can find with them that they've done before, uh, and I'll kind of find some stuff that sounds interesting. Off of that, I'll, I'll kind of prepare some questions, and then whatever topics you know come off of that. But I've done shows where I didn't even know who the guest was going to be till I showed up. Oh, that's fantastic! And so we would just, just kind of talk. You know, there's an improv game called Park Bench of Truth. It's an early one that they do like in the 101 level, but it's the idea is just get you uh, out of your comfort zone and just get you to like yes and and like talk to people just about whatever comes up. So I kind of take that approach, just you know whatever's going. Well, that's fantastic. I, I saw you, you made uh, videos, though, even long before ASMR, right? I've been um, around a long time. And I, I saw a video you had with, uh, I think it was a ufologist kind of guy who's talking about UFOs. Oh, yeah. It's probably that, David Levehart. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. It was, it was out there. Yeah. But I thought it was very entertaining, you know? Yeah. Because there, there are people that have compelling stories, and then there's people that just kind of like they're entertaining, and uh, and then there's some that are both, right? Yeah. So it, it looks to me like you try to go... None of those routes. None of those yeah. routes. <laughs> so, so, excuse me, what what's on your mind right now that it's like in the present moment that you would like to talk about in the next uh, five minutes or so? Oh, I have to think of something to talk I don't know yeah. what to talk about. Yeah, what, I, I keep things open, you know, I get yeah. somebody else and then I'll like say what I know about something. So uh, we can maybe have, have a little fun with that and just kind of be spontaneous. Uh, Absolutely. And then we can ask Norm, Norm, what kind of topic would you like us to talk, uh, Norm? What would you like me to talk about? Adam to elaborate on. Uh, I don't know, man. Why don't you tell us about uh, any recent developments with the OJ tour? Oh, oh. that's, you know, it's not <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just humming along. Um, I have a tour company. I do a bunch of different tours, but the, my signature tour that I do is the O.J. Simpson tour. Take people around Brentwood in a white Bronco. And oh wow! I'm from the, the West LA area, so I remember when all this was going down. I throw in little anecdotes about uh, what it was like growing up at the time. Uh, but that's you know, it's 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 humming along. It's a steady little business, just building things up. What I'm really excited about, though, in the future, and maybe we could talk about this, is I'm going to be working on a Real Housewives of Beverly Hills tour. Oh really? So um, I was. Uh, what happened now, man, was that I was given a tour, hike to the Hollywood sign. That's one of the tours I offer. Is that, um, is that from the Bronson side or, or? You go up from, um, from uh, yeah, from around there. Yeah, where the, bat, where the bat cave is. A I've... little up uh, Beachwood. But, um, oh, okay. But, yeah, you go up, you show the tourist or whatever. But it's long. They don't know how to get there on their own. So I have to be there, kind of be entertaining or whatever. Yeah. I was talking to this lady. She's from Australia. 
and uh, she just she was just turned 40. That's kind of the impression I got. And uh, she was on this vacation to America. What had happened was um, she and her boyfriend and her friend and her boyfriend had planned this international trip to America. But in the time between planning it and the trip, she had separated from her boyfriend and the other two had gotten married. Oh, so wow. she was a third wheel on this. <laughs> vacation. Wow. And she was just looking for anything else to do. So she found me. It was just me and her on this hike. And uh, we're walking up and there's, you know, just talking about anything. She's like, yeah, I just kind of found this. But what I was looking for and couldn't find was a Real Housewives of Beverly Hills tour. And then the light bulb just went off in my head. And so I committed myself to learning about this TV show. I'd never seen it before. It's over 150 episodes. So all summer. Really? I've been, it's been on for uh, eight years. The ninth season is starting in December. What network? It's a phenomenal. Bravo. Oh, that's why. Yeah. See, not a, people dismiss it. They're like, oh, I don't watch it. That's for gays. That's for women, whatever. <laughs> uh, and like, that's who their demographic is. But like, I look at it, it's like, oh, that's like a club I'm not in, that they're all into this thing. They think it's so great. I'm going to get like some of this knowledge. I want to be in on it, too. So I've watched, um, you know, I probably could have learned how to speak another language in the time <laughs> that I've been, been watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But I have two episodes left. And then after that, I will have seen every episode. Because would you want to take a tour from somebody who hadn't seen every episode? That's right. No, you wouldn't. And you so spent the, 150 hours. Watching. Well, the episodes are like 45 minutes. Oh, I see. But I'm like taking notes. Yeah. Like yeah, while yeah. I'm, it was, you know, it was all summer since May. I was working on it. So it's so it's you're going around to all the houses where all these women lived in no, Beverly Hills. No, or? well, actually, none of them live in Beverly Hills. Oh, really? It's something I found. They all kind of live. A lot of them live in the valley and stuff. So we'll see what there's time for. Uh, there's definitely been some restaurants where some big fights have happened. Oh, really? Um, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. You know, some, some, some stuff I think people remember the show, watch the show, will remember. So it has the, did the show take place just in Beverly Hills? Uh, it takes place in, it's the Beverly Hills lifestyle. Lifestyle, right. So, That's the main idea. Right. So every one of those restaurants up and down Beverly Drive, like, pretty much has been on it. Um, there's, their houses are in, you know, like, Holmby Hills area, Bel Air. A couple of them live in Malibu. A lot of them live, like, the... Um, live up off Mulholland, and so they'll go down to Ventura Boulevard to do all their business. Oh, of course. So, like, that's really kind of, you know, not really Beverly Hills at all, Ventura Boulevard, Studio well, those City. are people that come here. I know I've interviewed uh, uh, Scott Michaels from the Departed, yeah. uh, Dearly mm -hmm. Departed Tours, mm -hmm. so people come here and they like that kind of thing. Yeah, they want to see both sides and, of it. And they yeah. want to see another side of, of Hollywood that they don't get on TV, you yeah. know what I mean, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a, that's an interesting idea. I would have never thought of that one, but. Uh, yeah, it's been on, you know, there's a spinoff called Vanderpump Rules. Oh, really? And uh, it's about a restaurant that one of them owns. And that show is real popular. I went ate the restaurant. It's all tourists eating in there. So I think if I could just get a couple of those reality TV tourists, it'd be a, a great little addition to uh, pair up with the OJ tour. That sounds and fantastic. Actually, you Faye, actually have a white Bronco? Uh-huh, yeah, of Oh, wow, wow. And uh, actually, a little connection between the two. Faye Resnick, Nicole Simpson's best friend, who wrote the first book that came out about the trial, is a character is on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh, really? So it, it, you it goes You made a connection. Over. Yeah, absolutely. So it sounds like uh, an episode for ASMR. <laughs> yeah, right? If I could get one of the Andy Cohen or like one yeah, of the ladies yeah. on it, that'd be really great. That's My goal at this tour, though, is to get on Bravo. Oh, you know, in reality shows, excellent. they make them do like some stupid activity, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. oh, go do this dumb thing. Like, I want them to have to like come take my tour. Fantastic. That'd and that, that cool. could be the start of something even bigger. Yeah. You know? You never so, know. It's, there's people that do a Beatles tour and all kinds of stuff. You know, places mm -hmm. where the Beatles went in Los Angeles. Yeah. Somebody's doing a tour. That, oh, wow. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, amazing. So, Adam, thank you much, uh, so much for sharing that. Like, yeah, uh, sure. And uh, speaking of community producers, um, let's bring out... Uh, some community producers here that are currently in the studio. Hi, this is Eric from Behind the Curtains. I'm on the Now Man Show. Make sure you check him out on AT&T Universe 99 and Channel 32, Pasadena area, and hit him up on social media sites and Instagram. What else you have, Dan? Uh, uh, Twitter, at the Now Man Show. Uh, and yeah, and, and you are again behind the curtains. No, I'm behind the male now man show. Right <laughs> <laughs> I'm the <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, thank you. My name is Maria Hotnick, and I'm happy to be here with all these amazing producers. And I am a future producer. 
Hello everyone, my name is Eva Motion. My accent is from Russia and I'm, char I'm in charge of Healthy Lifestyle Show. What the hell are you talking about? Check it out. Hi, I'm Damian Rodriguez and I produce the music late night talk show, Deep Cuts Live. Hi everyone, I am the producer and host of Entertain LA, where we review events, concerts, and festivities across Southern California. You can check me out on my website, monicavalentine.net. You can also check out the other show that I produce, Grammy's Kitchen, which is the host, Norma Wells Zager, which the show is all about cooking with love. You can check her out on all of her social media pages. Hi, I'm uh, Jared Hodgton, and I produce the dystopian anti-corporate family sitcom called Home Time, which you can see on my YouTube page, Velcro Fathoms, at YouTube. Hi, I'm L.V. Smith, host of the show Sounds Within, a magazine about sound, people influenced and people who influence. All right, fantastic. And of course, you know, here with Adam and Norman. Adam and, Pap um, again, ASMR talk show. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Norm Davis, uh, host of Truth Noir. We talk about uh, current events and conspiracy theories. And uh, subscribe to everyone's YouTube channels that's watching. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, and everybody is here on YouTube. So uh, we are a community. We are a family. And that's really what this is all about. We produce content of all kinds. We want to entertain you, help you think, give you free speech, and whatever else that we can think of. Because, hey, there's unlimited possibilities for doing media. And you can join us uh, because we have a lot of fun, as you can see. We're a good group of people. We're great friends. And um, it's been great, continues to be great to work with these people on the Now Man Show. So I had to get him on here and uh, give him some space. And if, does anybody have anything that uh, they'd like to say? You're it's on watching mind. the Now Man Show. <laughs> <laughs> the Now Man Show will be back after this break. <laughs> and. and Hi, we are the Walters. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Merry Christmas from what mountain we live on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That works. <laughs> Hollywood Hills. Hollywood Hills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, serious. I'm Eric Bailey, a producer of the How To Show. Oh, that was we, a couple of years ago. Are, are we are behind we, the curtains? Okay, okay. Go ahead, do that here, again. Oh, okay, okay. it was so the same, like all the. public banking, which is what I'm focusing on now, uh, I believe is the ideal banking system, given the fact that banks are needed. I'd also like to see the ideal government, education, economic system in general come to be, so that one day we can look back on today as uh, a very unenlightened era and to bring about something that fully maximizes humanity's potential. My passion is um, to help communities that are suffering and that are unable to stand up for themselves because they're just trying to get by every day. I want future generations, my children's generation, to thrive, not just survive. The ruling class politics, capitalism, the word is almost never said. You know, it's That's kind right. of interesting. When I talk to my high school students and I say, have you guys heard the word capitalism? And most of them have not. Like, I'll see an episode of Star Trek or something, right? I'll say, like, <laughs> hey, how much do you guys get paid? Like get paid. We don't. We don't. That's not what motivates us. We, we work on the for the benefit of humanity. 